this next thing I'm going to show you is something that I just like to do because it's how I go along on my jobs. This is how to fold these little cups. You know, before um, uh, Dixie cups came into vogue, and that was a long time ago, sign painters in the past just carried flat pieces of paper. And from those pieces of paper, they would fold up their cup to work out of. And from what I hear back in the depression, they'd actually fold up business cards so they were really tight on how much paint to use. What I'm gonna do is quickly fold up a cup, no measuring, just all done by eye. And then from there, we'll go into how to do it uh, clearly. So just a piece of paper, I'm gonna fold it up. Hopefully there's no contrast there. Nice tight fold. Fold this over and get it about the same size as the other. Okay, so we've got that. And now to control the size of the cup, what you'll do is you'll fold over and depending on how much paint you wanna use and how large a cup, this next fold is gonna control that. So we'll fold over again. Nice tight fold, real square. Now here's the fun part. Put my fingernail in that corner so that that fold goes up to that. So going at 90 degrees, we're now gonna fold this up so that the flat comes up towards me. Okay, just give it a squeeze. That's about a 45 degree angle. So once again, flat, 90 degrees, fold the sides up, side up. Tuck in that straight edge into this straight edge, go like that. Take the other side, same thing. Fold it down, there's your palette. Back to the other end. We're gonna do the same thing. Fold it up, over like that, over like that. That's how quickly you can do it and you're off to work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that a bit slower um, because it seems like um, as simple as that is, it's sort of slightly confusing. And then I'm going to tell you a small story from ancient history. This particular piece of paper is three and a half, approximately nine centimeters by six inches approximately 15 centimeters. And I've drawn the lines on both sides so that as I fold, you'll see one color line going into the other color. So we're gonna start here from flat. We're going to 90 degrees. I'm tucking my fingernail into that corner. And I'm gonna fold it straight up so that that line is up against that line, see? So we got red on this side, blue on the other, just folding up, tucking it in like that, pull. The other side, doing the same thing, folding it up so the blue line gets folded right up against the red line. All right, fold her over. Same again, fold it up. It's already got a side to it, halfway there. Fold it up. Tuck your fingernail in, fold that baby up. Sometimes it gets sloppy, as you can see. So, and then some, and then we go and do it again. The one I did by eye is better than this one. They had the lines drawn. So there you go. Um, now, something like this in the olden times would be, and I worked this way for a long time. I'd be holding that, or you know, like that, and that's where hands start to go numb, you've got a mall stick in your hand. So um, instead of, you know, having a nice, this is thicker paper. So instead of having a nice firm hold like this with the mall stick, then you're working kind of like this with three fingers and hanging onto this up here and palleting and going. After a while, it just strains you. So that's why I changed over to using my palette with the cups in. Sometimes, depending on the type of paper, 
throw a little tape around so that you don't get seep through with solvents and paint. Plunk that baby in there, grab it, grab a brush, dipping paint, palette here or here or here, depending on what shape brush you need. Then the mall stick is lying on four fingers. You're not gripping it, you're just leaning it there. You got your brush and your mall stick and away you go. And we'll be showing that eventually in one of the videos. So that's that, that's the folding. As you can see, I fold them up to keep my M&M candies in, um, postage stamps, um, the conversational pieces, people seem to like them. Um, I will quickly tell you that I was in Detroit at a car show once and I was folding those and a couple of people came by and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm folding myself a cup to paint out of. So I was folding one up to show them and all of a sudden there were sort of a little group around me. So I'm thinking I'm grand, <laughs> folding up this thing, putting on a show. And I was about at the final stage where it was about like this. All of a sudden an arm comes over and into my cup goes this. See the size of that? Uh, my friend, I'll be a name dropper, Larry Hansen, who I was in school with in the 70s, folded this up and dropped it right into the cup that I was folding <laughs> and put me right back where I belonged, feeling more humble. This went into my kit. It has never left my kit. It's a treasure. So thank you, Larry. All right, back to work. I do recommend using the palette. Um, as I showed in the last video, it's just a very thin piece of aluminum. Uh, got it with a hole cut in it. Got a little pad here so that it rests nicely on your thumb. You can use a Dixie cup or fold up one of these contraptions. Your mall stick is very comfortable in your hand and you can paint for long periods of time. That's that. Now, I had a question from somebody about a mall stick. I noticed that a lot of people will carry a piece of dowel around. And when you're moving around from one place to another, I don't want a two and a half foot stick in my hands. So I recommend these mall sticks, which unscrew. Um, I've had this for a million years. Another trick that I've done from working in areas that are quite cold, sounds silly, but it works, is I simply wrapped this with a single layer of scotch tape which keeps your hands <laughs> off the very cold aluminum. And it just, it works really well. So these are available. I know Blick Art Materials sells these. The um, Rayco uh, Sign Supply outfit in Chicago probably still has them. And um, what I made is just a, a pouch for the mall stick so I can keep it in my kit. Want to go in. Um, and I tuck it back here uh, when I'm traveling with all three pieces in there in the pouch just to protect the thread. No big deal, just another little trick that you know keeps me happy. <laughs>